All right. Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the June 2021 virtual field trip to Cuyahoga Valley National Park. My name is Michelle Brocious. I uh, am your BirdWalk leader for this virtual field trip. I am a WCAS board member and field trip co-coordinator. Uh, a little bit about these virtual field trips for those who may not have attended before. Every month I select a location for participants to go and visit independently. Um, during the visit, participants uh, keep bir a bird list of the species they've seen, uh, take photographs of the, the scenery or the birds or other animals there, uh, also write some journaling and submit those items to me that I compile into this presentation and share on this virtual call. And of course, this um, call has been recorded and the presentation or a scrapbook, as I call it, is available um, afterward for viewing as well. All right, a little bit about Cuyahoga Valley National Park. The CVNP, midway between the cities of Cleveland and Akron, has been designated an IBA, that important bird area, by Ohio Audubon. It consists of about 33,000 acres, <coughs> excuse me, and its borders encompass some units of both the Cleveland Metro Parks and Metro Parks serving Summit County. The park is about 20, 22 miles long north and south and five miles wide at its greatest. Its central feature is the northward uh, flowing Cuyahoga River, accompanied by the historic Ohio and Erie Canal, the well-maintained towpath, and by the Cuyahoga Valley Scenic Rail Railway. This riparian habitat is productive for birding. The valley walls just beyond the floodplain rise on each side of the river valley, providing extensive contiguous deciduous forest peppered with some stands of evergreens. There is limited maintained grassland, an old farm field, and a number of small ponds. Wetlands are distributed throughout the valley. There have been 240 species documented in the CBNP, that's bird species. About 110 species nest in the valley, and up to 60 species can be found in the winter. And that, um, those paragraphs were taken from the Ohio Ornithological Society website, their birding at Cuyahoga Valley National Park page. And a beautiful picture of an eastern kingbird at Beaver Marsh by Tom Fishburn. All right, so we had a, a few target species. I, I wanted to pick a few birds that can be seen throughout the park. The first one, the scarlet tanager. A male scarlet tanagers are among the most blindingly gorgeous birds in an eastern forest in summer, with blood red bodies set off by jet black wings and tail. They're also one of the most frustratingly hard to find as they stay high in the forest canopy singing rich furry songs. Yellowish green dark winged females can be even harder to spot until you key in on this bird's chick burr call note. In fall, males trade red feathers for yellow green and the birds take off for northern South America. That description is from the Cornell Lab Ornithology, their scarlet tanager page. And a beautiful picture of a scarlet tanager. This one was taken at Menor Lagoons by Tom Fishburn. Scarlet tanager was indeed sighted during the field trip, but no one was able to get a picture of it. Uh, our second target species, the Orioles. There are two types of Orioles that can be found in the park, the Baltimore and the Orchard. The, the Baltimore Oriole description is the rich whistling song of the Baltimore Oriole echoing from treetops tree near homes and parks is a sweet herald of spring in eastern North America. Look way up to find these singers. The male's brilliant orange plumage blazes from high branches like a torch. Nearby, you might spot the female weaving her remarkable hanging nest from slender fibers. Fond of fruit and nectar as well as insects, Baltimore Orioles are easily lured to backyard feeders. Again, that description is from the Cornell Lab. And the Orchard Oriole. The Orchard Oriole swaps the typical flame orange of other Orioles for a deep burnished russet. Hopping among riverine shrubs or scattered trees, male orchard orioles sing a whistled, chattering song to attract yellow-green females. The smallest of the northern uh, North America's orioles, it gleans insects from foliage and builds hanging pouch-like nests during its brief breeding season and then heads back to Central America for the rest of the year. Orchard orioles also feed on fruit and nectar in orchards, gardens, and elsewhere. Again, the description taken from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology website. And on the right, I have included a picture of a Baltimore Oriole that I took at Headlands Dune State Nature Preserve. And we do have a field trip there coming up this fall. Finally, our third species that we were looking for, the wood duck. 
Uh, the wood duck is one of the most stunningly pretty of all waterfowl. Males are iridescent chestnut and green with ornate patterns on nearly every feather. The elegant females have a distinctive profile and delicate white pattern around the eye. These birds live in wooded swamps where they nest in holes in trees or in nest boxes put up around lake, lake margins. They are one of the few duck species equipped with strong claws that can grip bark and perch on branches. And a picture that I took of a wood duck at Beaver Marsh at the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. All right, our first uh, participants, Marianne and John Henderson, uh, cataloged a total of 41 species on June 2nd. And she says, uh, yesterday, John and I visited the Kendall Lake area of Cuyahoga Valley National Park. We had gotten a tip that prairie warblers were found in the Kendall Lake area. We found them and so much more. If you visit Kendall Lake, we parked at the Kendall Lake Shelter lot off Truxell Road. This gives access to several trails. Tip for travelers, the Akron Peninsula Road is closed, so you'll want to enter Truxell Road from the Akron Cleveland Road. Just to add to your adventure, Truxell Road has two names. It is also called Kendall Park Road. When you finally reach the parking lot, you'll be relieved to find nice, clean, open restrooms. We started with the lake trail and found hooded and yellow warblers and common yellow throats. But the real prize came next. At the back of the lake, the lake trail gives access to the Pine Hollow area, a meadow habitat. This area was loaded with field sparrows, towhees, indigo buntings, and kingbirds. We found both prairie and blue-winged warbler. And tip, tip for e-birders. Kendall Lake has two hot spots. Previous birders have been careful to segregate species accordingly. For the meadow, use the Pine Hollow trailhead hot spot. For the lake trail, use the Kendall Lake and trail hot spot. I only figured this out when I got home and had to separate my list. Um, so that's a great tip for eBirders. Uh, learn from uh, Marianne's lesson that she learned the hard way. Um, and a beautiful picture of a blue-winged warbler at Kendall Hills, Cuyahoga Valley National Park by Tom Fishburn on the right. And here is the bird list. Uh, Notable species, the great crested flycatcher, the cedar waxwing, target species, Baltimore oriole, blue-winged warbler, hooded warbler, prairie warbler, and indigo bunting. And that gorgeous hooded warbler at Kendall Lake by Tom Fishburn on the left. All right, now we come to my visit. I visited the park on June 5th. Um, I only had 11 species. I have nothing to blame it on this time. I didn't have a child with me like I did the last field trip. Uh, it was hot. Maybe that was why. Or maybe it just, you know, only maybe three and a half years into this birding thing. So hopefully with experience, I'll start to see more birds. All right, I visited Beaver Marsh at Cuyahoga Valley National Park on June 5th, arriving a little later in the morning at 9.54 a.m. when temps were already in the high 70s and would climb throughout my visit. I took the short path that connects the Ira Trailhead parking lot to the Ohio and Erie Canal towpath trail and immediately saw a mother wood duck with four ducklings in the historic canal waters. At this point, I had to pull up my Google Maps app to see which way to Beaver Marsh as I didn't happen to notice a clearly marked sign and figured that I need to head north. It was a busy day on the towpath full of other walkers like me as well as runners and cyclists. It was great to see so many people enjoying the national park and the birds and other wildlife seemed undisturbed by the human activity. There's a picture I took of wood ducks at Beaver Marsh. Um, mother duck and she has two ducklings there and the other two must have been, oh wait, there's three, there's one at the bottom and the other one must be out of frame. All right, and then two more pictures, the mother wood duck with two of the four ducklings on the left and um, the mother wood duck on the right at Beaver Marsh. And I also saw some pretty flowers along the towpath that iNaturalist identified as the Dame's Rocket and Yellow Iris. And uh, both of these uh, photos have been confirmed by other iNaturalist users, so pretty sure that's correct. Right. Further down the towpath, I found red-winged blackbirds, mostly females, hopping around on the scatterdock with cow lilies. A great blue heron was also present. So I have a male red-winged blackbird on the left, and then a female on the, um, the spatter dock on the right at Beaver Marsh. And two more females. It actually might be the same. There, there were a few of them hopping around um, on the spatter dock at Beaver Marsh. 
All right, I finally reached the boardwalk area of Beaver Marsh and was greeted by another great blue heron perched on a tree out in the open over the marsh. I also saw an eastern kingbird and tree swallows buzzing over the marsh. The tree swallows had a cavity nest in a dead tree really close to the boardwalk, but they were too quick for my camera. There were also dragonflies and damselflies enjoying the morning. So on the right-hand side, uh, that great blue heron was, yeah, it was sitting right out in the open on that tree. So it was a great, great view of it, and I got um, a couple shots. So there's the first one, and then a, a couple more shots with it, it preening um, in its wing there, and then just one with it standing upright. Here's two photos I took of an eastern kingbird. Um, this was also just, you know, flying around and perching in different places. So the left, uh, just kind of like a, a wide shot of the scenery, and then I got a closer up photo. And then two really close ups. It came in and perched really close to me, so I was able to zoom in on that and get some really nice pictures. All right, uh, common green darner, a dragonfly on the left, and an ebony jeweling, uh, I believe that's a damselfly, on the right at Beaver Marsh. At this point, I continued north beyond the boardwalk and came to a lovely view of the Cuyahoga River with an informational sign regarding restoring the Cuyahoga's floodplain. Human development impacts a healthy floodplain as rainwater doesn't drain naturally from parking lots and even the towpath trail, creating flash flooding. The force of flash floods cause damage to the environment, deepening natural waterways, eroding river banks, and disrupting aquatic life. However, wetland areas like Beaver Marsh hold water and therefore naturally contain flooding. The floodplain is also conserved by volunteers planting native trees along the river to hold soil in place when it rains. Uh, so there's a photo I took of the Cuyahoga River um, on the towpath trail near Beaver Marsh. And then I took a, a picture of the, the sign. I, I summarized what it said, but it, it goes into a little more in-depth on the sign. Right, I decided to turn back and head south along the towpath as I was walking Sorry about that pop-up. All right. I decided to turn back and head south along the towpath. As I was walking along, I heard a loud crack, which made me stop in my tracks. And right in front of me dropped a chunk of bark, like right in front of, like it landed on the trail in front of me, those huge pieces of bark. Um, at that moment, a runner was passing me. We made eye contact, and I know her. Uh, Sarah and I are friends from the Ohio Certified Volunteer Naturalist Program and have been birding together as recently as the spring. She indicated she needed to finish her run to the other side of the marsh and would meet me there. Uh, she left and I continued along my way as soon, and soon came across a female red-winged blackbird, this time up in a tree. I was taking photos of this bird when another photographer stopped to ask if I had seen anything good. Bob was his name. Bob told me about an eastern king, kingfisher's, uh, that's supposed to say kingbirds. Uh, I'll correct that later. Eastern kingbirds nest back toward the marsh. We decided to head back that way together and saw a snappy turtle and another wood duck family. And so there's a picture of the female red-winged blackbird at or near Beaver Marsh. And two more pictures of the female red-winged blackbird at Beaver Marsh. Nice, you know, in, you know, on that tree right in front of me, you no know, leaves in front of it. I was very happy. Um, the way it posed. All right, and then here's photos of the the, um, the wood duck that I just mentioned as well, the female wood duck at Beaver Marsh, both on the left and the right there. And two more pictures of her just swimming around, and she's got babies nearby, and you'll see those. Next, so this is my favorite. I just, this is the happiest, I'm the happiest, the happiest juvenile wood duck at Beaver Marsh. It just looks like it's smiling, and having a good time, it's with its mama and its siblings. And there's two more pictures of that same duck uh, now nibbling in the water. And I believe this might also be the same individual. It's kind of turned to the right a little bit. And here's another picture on the left of mama and the baby wood duck. And then on the right, a picture of the snapping turtle that had come out to rest on a log. All right, Bob and I continued along the towpath uh, once more and met up with my friend Sarah. I had been taking so long with photography that she had decided to come back through the marsh to find me. The three of us soon came to the eastern kingbird's nest. 
It was so high up and obscured by leaves that I would have never found it on my own, even knowing it was in the area. So I'm glad Bob decided to walk back with me. Uh, my visit to Cuyahoga Valley National Park proved to be successful with at least one of the target species seen. The park also proved to be a good place to run into friends and make new ones. So Bob and I are now Facebook friends, and um, he does post a bird of the day photo, which is really fun. All right, here's my list, Mighty 11. Uh, notable species, the wood duck and the eastern kingbird. Um, and then on the left there, another picture of the juvenile wood duck at Beaver Marsh. All right, next up is Al Rand, uh, visited the park five times. I think he might get the award for most times this time around, and 52 species observed. So um, he says, made a total of five trips to the CVNP throughout June, visited the Station Road Towpath Trail on the Summit County side on June 5th, lured my folks to come along in hopes of seeing an eastern screech owl and nesting prefonitory warblers. We found neither. However, the trip paid off because my folks got their first good look at an indigo bunting. Three trips were to the, I don't know how to pronounce that, Jake? Mill Park Headquarters. Okay, Nancy's nodding. Thank you. Jade Mill Park Headquarters starting on June 10th, where I walked the tracks in search of yellow-breasted chat. Just before the intersection of the Buckeye Trail, I heard what I thought was the chat. I listened for about 15 minutes but couldn't find the bird. Then out flew a brown thrasher. Around the same time, some weather rolled. Defeated, I decided to cut the trip short. Glad I brought my umbrella. I took the same approach on June 19th with no luck again. But finally, the chat made an appearance on June 20th. Although it was not a lifer, it was still rewarding to, find, to finally see one in county. The takeaway was learning the nuances of the location. Buck spray is a must. I was fortunate not to pick up any ticks, but others I know who visited the area weren't. After accomplishing my goal, I headed to the Brookside Marsh, where a least bittern was reported earlier in the week. No bittern and nothing else spectacular bird-wise, but the plants and insects kept me occupied, including the chat I identified 52 species. And there on the right-hand side is a photo of the yellow-breasted chat um, that Al Rand took at Jate Mill Park headquarters. And then here, uh, a picture of some of the stormy weather um, that he took. Be those clouds are just beautiful, I, you know, although, you know, kind of interrupted a bird walk, but just very um, beautiful scenery there. And then a photo of a sweet pea in the genus Lapras at Cuyahoga Valley National Park by Al Rand. And here is his bird list. Uh, notable species include the great egret, eastern wood peewee, great crested flycatcher, a wood thrush, cedar waxwing, yellow-breasted chat. He did get the target species, Baltimore oriole, a uh, rose-breasted grosbeak, and indigo bunting. And then on the left, a photo of a blue tip dancer at Cuyahoga Valley National Park by Al Rand. All right, Lisa Gerbic um, visited the park on June 11th and June 22nd and identified 40 species. Um, she says, at the Beaver Marsh on June 11th, I headed north on the path and saw many wood ducks. I watched as a muskrat tried unsuccessfully to catch a duckling. A pileated woodpecker was looking for a meal in the down trees along the river as the CVMP train roared by. I found a pair of indigo buntings that were enjoying the seed heads on the grass. I saw many young birds along the path, including two American robin nests and white-breasted nuthatches and cedar waxwings feeding their fledglings. An orchard oriole pair were flying in and out, feeding their nestlings. A northern flicker arrived to feed its noisy young. I watched as a tree swallow defended its nest. I was surprised to see so many flies on the spatter dock it was just op that was just opening. In the marsh, I spotted a great blue heron, an eastern kingbird, looking for a meal, and a belted kingfisher posed for me before he rattled off. And a beautiful picture of that mother wood dock um, with her four ducklings at Beaver Marsh by Lisa Gerbic. All right, so photos here, wood duck, a mama on the left, and wood ducklings on the right at Beaver Marsh. Here's a muskrat on the left and a green heron on the right at Beaver Marsh by Lisa Gerbeck. Pileated woodpecker on the left and indigo bunting on the right at Beaver Marsh by Lisa Gerbeck. And here are the white-breasted nut hatches she saw at Beaver Marsh. 
Uh, photo of American robin in nest on the left. Is that right, Nancy? She didn't identify this. I thought that looked like a robin, and she mentioned the nest. Okay, good. All right. I, I had my own um, robin at, on my property this year, so I was like, that looks like the same bird. American robin in nest on the left, and cedar waxwing on the right at Beaver Marsh. All right, here, a male orchard oriole on the left and the female orchard oriole on the right at Beaver Marsh. So fun that she got a, a picture of the orchard orioles. Northern flicker on the left and great blue heron on the right at Beaver Marsh by Lisa Gerbic. And then the tree swallows on the left and eastern kingbird on the right at the marsh by Lisa. And belted kingfisher on the left. And here are the, the small flies on the spatter dock uh, that she mentioned in her journaling um, at Beaver Marsh. So that's I didn't count them, but it looks like a lot. All right, and then um, here's her bird list. Notable species include the target, wood duck, uh, green heron, eastern wood peewee, willow flycatcher, cedar waxwing, orchard, and Baltimore oriole. Again, the target species and indigo bunting. And a photo of a Another photo of the green heron um, at Beaver Marsh by Lisa Gerbeck. All right, Sean. Sean Missig um, visited the preserve three times and tallied a total of 22 species. Sean, do you want me to do it? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So dates visited um, June 6th, 8th, and 13th. He says, I have been visiting parts of the Cuyahoga Valley National Park for years now. However, it was originally for riding my bike on the towpath. This was the first time I had visited the, with the intentions of photographing wildlife there. During each of my visits, I made sure to visit the Beaver Marsh, Indigo Lake, and Station Road areas. The Beaver Marsh is a beautiful area filled with wildlife, and I spent a great deal of time there. On the trail leading to the boardwalk, I found a few female red-winged blackbirds who were flying from plant to plant within the water looking for food. A few times they would emerge with a small caterpillar or bug, and then they would fly off. They were a lot of fun to watch and sometimes would get very close to where I was standing. The males would occasionally fly through as well, but they were usually just making noise or observing from a high up perch. Uh, so here's a photo of a female red-winged blackbird at Beaver Marsh by Sean Missig. And she's holding something. She got something there to eat. All right, and then two more red-winged blackbirds, uh, females at Beaver Marsh by Sean Zig. I just got one on the right, just, you know, peeking out from behind um, the spatter dock there. All right, I also found a few snapping turtles along the way to the main boardwalk. They were smaller in size, but they patrolled the water like they owned it. Moss and vegetation covered most of their shells, and they would poke their heads out every once in a while for air. Once I made it to the main boardwalk, there were many more birds flying around, and the majority of these were tree swallows. I feel like I've seen many more tree swallows this year compared to previous years, but maybe that's because I'm actually paying attention. For whatever the reason may be, I am certainly not complaining. I quickly spotted two nests within trees out in the marsh. One of those nests happened to be fairly close to the extended area of the boardwalk. The tree swallows nesting there were very active and were not bothered by me or any of the other people who were there. I spent a good amount of the time watching them take turns feeding the young and guarding the nest. The second nest that I had seen was further away, but the birds were just as active. With that nest, I was able to witness much more of the tree swallows' acrobatics as they caught bugs to feed their young. I will always stop to watch these highly skilled flyers. So on the left-hand side, a photo of the snapping turtle at Beaver Marsh by Sean Missig. And then here are the acrobatic tree swallows at the marsh by Sean. Those are a couple of very fun images for sure. And then uh, two more uh, tree swallows at the marsh uh, by Sean, this time perched. All right. When I reached the second extension of the boardwalk, I found the biggest snapping turtle I've ever seen. At first, I wasn't sure if it was a turtle or something else in the water. Its face was not visible to me, and with its shell being covered in moss, it mostly blended in. It wasn't until it started to move that I saw the giant claws on its feet, and then I saw its head. As it moved, it pushed a lot of water and caused a lot of disturbance to the surrounding area. With how graceful it was moving through the water, you would like to think 
of it as a gentle giant. The snapping turtles are anything but gentle. Good thing it was in the water and I was on the boardwalk. I did spot a gray blue heron in the distance preening itself, but almost looked right past it. It almost completely blended in with the vegetation around it. As I continued my way up the path, I saw several families of wood ducks. Each family was of a different size, and the ducklings all appeared to be of different ages as well. These were the cutest ducklings I had ever seen, and I took my fair share of pictures before Mama led the ducklings out of the area. So there's the, the picture on the left there of the huge snapping turtle at Beaver Marsh by Sean. You can see its, it's huge head is like right here, and its shell, and its leg. Um, it's a very big turtle. All right, photos of the great blue heron on the left and a wood duck on the right. Um, at Beaver Marsh by Sean Missig. And I like that pose of that. Um, I think there's like two wood duck there, it looks like. But I like the, the one in front, how it's leaning its head, tilting its head back. I think that's really an adorable pose. All right, here's two more wood duck at Beaver Marsh by Sean Missig. Female, obviously. All right, I also found some interesting butterflies, dragonflies, and damselflies in the area as well. The most interesting was a butterfly that looked like its wings were made of fire. What I found even more interesting about this creature was that when I looked it up, every source came back with the name question mark. Although I didn't really understand the name, I found it to be a beautiful creature, and I was able to capture a few shots as it was basking in the sun. In this same area, I also found a few male ebony jeweling damselflies flying around and landed landing on sunny leaves. These damselflies can be easily identified by their metallic blue-green bodies paired with black wings. It's amazing what you'll find when you stop to take a look. My walk back to the parking area yielded more of the same species each time and made for a great walk. So there's the question mark butterfly at Beaver Marsh by Sean Missig on the left. And then here's a blue dasher dragonfly on the left and an ebony jewelry damselfly on the right at Beaver Marsh by Sean Missig. Indigo Lake was my second stop for each trip. I used this spot as a place to rest and took in the beauty of the surrounding area. The views at Indigo Lake are truly unique and provide a peaceful atmosphere to relax. I did walk up the path there, but I was not able to capture anything. The temperature was high each time I was there and the birds were hiding deep in the forest. I heard many, but could not see them but still captured a very beautiful image of the, the scenery um, at Indigo Lake on the left there. All right, Station Road was the final place I stopped on all of my trips. This place was very familiar to me as I used the fish at the dam, now removed, and I would start my towpath bike riding journeys here as well. I have always found this area to be quite beautiful no matter what time of year, and there is always plenty of wildlife. I started out going to the left of the bridge where the dam used to be. It was weird seeing the water that low and the river now being wide open, but it was still a wonderful view. On my way back, I checked for one of the resident screech owls but not, did not see it. I then walked up the towpath to the right of the bridge and didn't find much of anything out and about that way either. It didn't help that it was hot above 80 degrees each time I was there. I made my way back to the bridge and this was where I found all the species I saw on my trips. On 6-8, I spotted a common yellow throat of light fur, congratulations, Sean, which despite their name, have not been very common for me. This was the first one I have seen and was also my first light fur for this location. Um, and then on the right-hand side, Northern Cardinal at Station Road by Sean Missig. All right, uh, my second lifer came on my, hold on a second. Can you all hear me? I seem to be frozen, but if you can hear me, that's fine. Okay, all right, I gotta go back. There we go. All right, my second lifer came on my final visit, 613, and it was a female cerulean warbler. I was hoping to spot a male, but did not find one. At first I thought this was possibly a female goldfinch since it was further away and I couldn't see too much detail. It wasn't until I was going through my images that I found it to be the female cerulean warbler, a truly wonderful surprise. There were also a few cedar waxwings flying around the area as well. These birds have always fascinated me with the way their feathers look so smooth. They are also a bird, they are also a bird I don't see too often, so I always enjoy seeing them when I do. A flyover from a great blue heron and a red-shouldered hawk made for a pleasant view in the sky. 
The Cuyahoga Valley National Park is a beautiful and well-preserved area that makes for a wonderful visit any time of year. I look forward to visiting during autumn to catch the leaves as the change, as the change colors and fall into the surrounding areas. All right, so uh, a picture of the Famille Cerulean Warbler at Station Road by Sean Missig with his Lifer Award. Um, congratulations for that Lifer. And two more pictures of the Female Cerulean Warbler at Station Road by Sean. And there's another picture of the Female Cerulean Warbler on the left and Cedar Waxwing on the right at Station Road, uh, taken by Sean. And here's the bird list. Notable species include the wood duck, that was the target, yellow warbler, cedar waxwing, willow flycatcher, common yellow throat, uh, lifer award there, and cerulean warbler, another lifer award. And on the left hand side, a photo of the willow flycatcher at Beaver Marsh by Sean Missig. All right, Nancy, do you want to um, cover your slides or would you prefer that I read them? Oh, I'll, I'll do uh, my presentation. All right, fantastic. Just tell me when you want me to. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I knew I was going to mess up. <laughs> uh, I will put a new picture there that has to do with <laughs> um, the the Cuyahoga Valley National Park instead of last last week or last month's um, field trip. Sorry about that. I don't see anything changing on the slide. Is it is it your no? I I will put a new picture there after this call. Oh, I don't I don't see anything that Is there nothing on the site? It doesn't say Nancy Howell. No, no, it still has Sean Missig's Oh, um, okay. Well let me go back and then forward again. Maybe it Oh there we go. Okay. So wrong, sorry about yeah, that. Wrong wrong picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. So yep, yeah, I was able to visit Cuyahoga Valley four times. And I have to admit, I'm in the Cuyahoga Valley every Monday with a group of birders uh, that go between Indigo Lake and Ira or Ira to Indigo uh, as our usual route. So this one was, again, kind of a, I, I guess I, I'm going to put in air quotes, cheated a little bit uh, because, again, I'm in the valley. But, but uh, again, it's always fun to go with our group. There could be a few of us in the group. There could be a number of us in the group. Marianne and Tom Romito are there. Um, and there's a bunch of folks that you probably don't know who join us. Uh, and what, what's fun about the group is that, you know, there's so many eyes. Everybody's looking around. So people see different things. People point stuff out. Um, there's fabulous photographers. I am not one. Um, but what also is cool is that we jibber jabber a lot. We we talk a lot <laughs> along the way. But when something is heard, when something is seen, boom! Everybody is like on point. Oh, I want to see it. I want to see that scarlet tanager or that common yellow throat or oh, look at the baby wood ducks. You know, you can see a million baby wood ducks, but you want to see them again. So again, it's it's just really fun being with the group. Uh, sharing information, looking up information, because people come up with some interesting questions like, well, gee, where do such and such go in uh, in the winter? You know, where do they spend their wintering or, or non-breeding area? Or how many broods does, a, or, does an orchard oriole have? You know, so we'll look up information uh, on, on stuff like that. So... And what's also really nice when we do this walk is it's almost like a survey. You know, we're, we're doing the same uh, area week after week. Again, one week we started Indigo, walk to uh, uh, Ira. One week we started Ira, we go to Indigo. So again, we're, we're keeping track of things and see how things change and what uh, what's nesting and, you know, just note stuff down. It all goes into eBird as well, too. So looks like we need to get back on. I think Michelle's going to be joining us here shortly with the slides. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. I don't know. Like for some reason, it just 
quit and I wasn't touching anything. So I'm going to, I can't see anybody, but I'm going to try. Okay, I can see you. Uh, the slides okay. are not up anymore. All right, let me share my screen. I'll get that back up. I am so sorry. I believe we are still recording. Hopefully, Betsy can splice this all together. All right, I'm going to share my desktop. And then let me get this. I'm going to have to hold on a second while I switch the views. There. There we go. Yeah, so while you were trying to get yourself back on, Michelle, I was talking about how important it is as our group points things out when we hear or see things. And that we're, it's almost as if we're doing a survey as we go from IRA to Indigo or Indigo to IRA. So every week we can keep track of what's happening and um, how things change throughout the year because we do this year uh, week in and week out no matter what the weather. Fantastic. All right. Are you ready for the next slide? Uh, yeah. There, well, your, your home screen is up right now showing the yellow warbler in the background and all your folders. I have it up and sharing. <laughs> all right. Hold on. Is, unless there, uh, somebody else is seeing something different. There we go. Okay. Okay. Um, next slide. Here we go. So uh, 67 species were, were cited by our group. Um, and I probably saw all of them. Um, like I say, I cheated a little bit with, with being with the group. Um, but I do want to note that a lo uh, that whole month of June, not a single Canada goose. Uh, or, or I should say not a whole bunch of Canada geese. And boy, by fall and winter, there are Canada geese all over the place. So where do they go at this time of the year? How come there's only like three or four that we were able to see? Um, possibly once they're finished nesting, if they do pull off nests successfully, um, there's a lot of nest predation of, of Canada geese, but um, then they go through a, a molt where they lose all their flight feathers and then of course being um, uh, not being able to fly they want to be hidden in the marsh or air, uh, areas where they, they can't be seen very easily so so perhaps that's where the Canada geese go but very few Canada geese. Wood ducks on the other hand lots and lots of wood ducks and, and thank you for all the lo lovely photographs of wood ducks not primarily females with their with their young of the year and uh, I can't remember who mentioned it was 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 Alan or Sean mentioned but the wood duck babies uh, can be so many different sizes you can have some that are looks like a couple weeks old and some that are newly hatched so so again there's not all this uh, not everything's hatching all at the same time um, what was nice this year, we had spotted sandpipers uh, right at the river bend uh, along that, along the towpath. And we think that they probably nested on that gravel island. Um, with, without not being flooded throughout pretty much the summer, um, the, the spotted sandpipers looked as though they were able to bring off at least two young. Normally they'd have four, four eggs, uh, but we were only able to see two young. But they camouflage very well, so maybe they did have four. Now, of course, with this rain that we've been having, that island it was completely submerged this past Monday. So I'm, we're hoping that all the spotted sandpipers were able to get to a slightly higher ground. And of course, great blue herons and green herons are there uh, often. And I believe the photographs that folks have taken of the great blue heron at Beaver Marsh is that same very vain bird. It just likes to sit out there and get its photograph taken again and again. It, oh, this side. Oh, this. Okay, this side. Oh, me preening. Wing open. You know, it likes its photo being taken. Um, not a whole lot of kingfisher action, unfortunately, that we were able to see again on those Mondays. Uh, I know other folks may have had kingfishers, but uh, again, they're, they're here and there sometimes, so we just don't get them all the time. 
uh, raptors, hit or miss, sometimes having things like broad-winged and red-shouldered hawk, red-tailed hawk, and then some weeks not a single raptor, not even a vulture, so who knows. Uh, eagles are nearby, but again, we don't see them very often. Now, osprey we've had a couple times, and that was pretty cool. Next slide, please. And what's, again, really nice about that area of the towpath between uh, Ira and Indigo Lake is there's a, a variety of habitats, uh, some shrub scrub areas, uh, especially under power lines and the, the uh, gas line cut-throughs. There's the, the water, the aquatic area, the river, as well as the marsh. And then you have the forested area. So there's a really quite a, a nice selection of species that can be seen flycatchers, vireos, blackbirds, um, and uh, warblers tend to be a little bit on the lower side uh, as far as their, their diversity, but again, it's nice to get hooded warbler and American red start and blue winged warbler, so, so that's a lot of fun. All right, and I think the next one is going to be my bird list. And yep, I was able to get wood duck, one of our target species. The osprey was awesome. Um, Let's see, great crested flycatcher. Again, you, you notice there's a lot of woodland species, where the, the like broad-winged hawk or a woodland hawk, um, red shoulder a woodland hawk, uh, the hairy and, and pileated woodpeckers, uh, eastern wood peewee, Acadian flycatcher, uh, great crested. Um, now, white-eyed vireo is a shrub scrub species, but the yellow-throated vireo is a forest species, as are is warbling and red-eye. Next slide, please. And uh, let's see. The swallows, we're starting to get some different swallows appearing at the marsh. So if you do happen to go back, you may get uh, more than just rough wing tree and barn swallows. There's uh, uh, some banks and uh, even a cliff swallow. Purple martins will be starting to, to gather there, too. But that's, that's now. Um, but you can see there's, uh, again, quite a variety. Uh, Veeries singing all over the place. I'm surprised nobody had Veery uh, on their list yet, or maybe they did, I'm not sure. Um, or both Orchard and Baltimore Orioles, and um, the Warblers. Oh, and, and yeah, we did get the Scarlet Tanager, didn't we? How about that? So, yay, all target species, hooray. Yeah, you were the only one who participated that got all the target species. That's why I gave you that award. So. But remember, we teed it a little bit because we have a bunch <laughs> of people okay. in the group. So I may not have found all of these species, but certainly they were pointed out and added on the list. Thank you for allowing me to, to have these on here. Of course. All right. So Tom, that brings us to your section. Would you Are you interested in sharing or would you like me to read it? Yeah, I'll, I'll participate here. Cool. So, um, yeah, I got there twice in June. Um, in summer, when birds settle in and start their families, I hope to see the resident birds in their breeding area. Uh, surprising to me this year is what I've learned of uh, what I consider an uncommon species to northeast Ohio that was possibly nesting in the Cuyahoga Valley, and that's this prairie warbler. It became my personal target species starting back in May. Um, I did not hear of these being here last year, but this year when I heard they were back again, I contacted the observer who kindly gave me directions to Kendall Hills. So after my May visit, I visited the Cuyahoga Valley in, in June twice. Um, so besides the Kendall Hills and Kendall Lake areas, I also made it to the Beaver Marsh uh, towpath area there, very popular place. And at, at or near the Beaver Marsh, I was able to see several woodlucks, as everybody did, at different stages of growth, is <laughs> what I noticed as well. And at least one newly fledged, I'm pretty sure two, uh, red wing blackbirds that were begging. Uh, the one in particular that got photographed, the, the mom appeared that it was really interesting getting it to fly and hunt for itself. If I'm not mistaken, Michelle, I think you had something similar happen to you maybe in your own backyard or something. I forget 
I think I remember seeing a, you post something about a, uh, a parent, uh, a mom, uh, not really uh, feeding its young one because the young one wanted to, um, was still begging it. I think pretty typical. If it wasn't you, it was somebody I saw. And um, of course, the tree swallows. Always fun to see it along the, uh, the beaver marsh area. I did see one cedar waxwing kind of far away compared to the other uh, picture that Sean had in uh, Lutz, I think, had one um, much nicer. And um, I did get the willow flycatcher, probably the same one that Sean got um, on the north end of the beaver marsh. Um, so they, they stood out as special to me. The, the picture here uh, is one of the prairie warblers that I took in May. And this, this is one that apparently had a rough time, if you notice the tail. Uh, it only has like one or two tail feathers left. It, it's a male. It's one of two males that I saw on that day, and uh, but that tail stuck out to me. Um, what do you got next? More prairie warblers. Yeah, I was really interested. I'm writing an article about prairie warblers, as a matter of fact, a couple of different ones, um, and um, but. I used to always have to go down to southern Ohio to, to see prairie warblers. So once in a while, you'd see them come this way, but they wouldn't stick around. You would just kind of, uh, you know, maybe be overshot, you know. Uh, you'd see them in May more than otherwise. Um, but then um, I heard I could go down to Knox County, which is what I did a year ago to see them, which was still, you know, it wasn't real far down, but it was still far enough. But this year, um, I heard about them in Kendall Hills, so um, I went several times and um, as, um, oh, uh, was it, uh, the Hendersons, I think, you know, had heard about them and they went to, went to look for them too. Um, a lot more people are looking for them in that Kendall Hills area. Uh, just a really nice bird to be seen up this way in, the, in more of a northern county. Um, so stay tuned for my uh, additional uh, stories on prairie warblers that will be coming up. Um, so next slide. And there's some of the wood duck. Yeah, there's the mama wood duck. That was the one close by you know, the, uh, the parking area there. And I only saw two young ones when I was there with her. Um, these are the, the younger ones that I saw. Um, next slide. And um, the two, oh, these are older ones on the left. This, these were on the north side um, in the canal, close to where the Cuyahoga River comes in. And so they were, they were around there, uh, two different ones. And then um, I think it was, I saw two females on the south side. So this one with its color showing and posing for me, which was delightful on my way back, um, uh, got, Got to see her in some good light as she uh, was doing some preening, um, posing up there. So, yeah, the wood ducks were certainly fun. I think I might have seen a male fly over, but they, you know, I guess uh, they start to go into their, um, what, what do they call that? Um, plumage, um, Nancy. They go, Eclipse. Plumage Eclipse yeah. plumage. Eclipse, yeah. This is the, or, well, June, they start that early? Switching, do they? Uh, they do, um, but now is really more of the time. Um, remember now, the guys don't hang around the females with their young. They're they're off batching it somewhere else. So, who knows where they were hanging out? Yeah, I think I saw one fly kind of way away from the boardwalk, but uh, yeah, I didn't get any close-ups of the males. But um, yeah, it's interesting when they change their the plumage, that eclipse plumage, and they become harder to see, but then it all comes back like in October, I think. It's really nice. They think it's wonderful to see them. But uh, but in the meantime, you can't beat these ladies when they show off their, their colors like this one. Um, next slide. Ah, and then the uh, the red-winged blackbirds. Yeah, when I, um, th this was one. I think there were two, but this young one was seemed to be begging. Um, and... Um, I think this is the only time I ever saw a female red-winged blackbird with red wings actually showing like that. I don't remember seeing them before, but 
but this mom was coming in um, and uh, paying some attention to the baby, but she wasn't feeding it at all. Um, next slide. There we go again. She, she's just kind of staring that one down. I think it's begging, begging, and and uh, she's just grow. Wants it to grow up, I guess, or something. Well, okay, it's mom doing mom duties, I would say. Um, next slide. Yep, and the tree swallows. Yeah, but Sean had some neat uh, acrobatics there. This one was flying in and um, to a spot there, and I was able to catch that and. Um, I assumed there was a nest in there. I didn't see that nest, but I assumed there was one close by in there. Uh, next slide. And there's the wax wing on the left-hand side in bright sun, so its colors aren't the best there. And then there's my uh, willow fly catcher. That was pretty far away, too. I uh, could hear that singing, so I could, couldn't miss the willow fly catcher. It would move around from one spot or another. Uh, on the, that was on the north end of the the boardwalk area. Okay, what you got next? Yeah, and um, yeah, the hood warbler was a real neat uh, treat. Uh, that was right by Kendall Lake, and um, probably a good chance the same ones that the Hendersons made note of. I, well, actually, hood warblers are, and blue wing warblers are uh, pretty common actually in the Cuyahoga Valley, um, just depending where the habitat is, but. Um, that that hood of warbler, I, I was um, you know fifty a hundred yards away heard it singing, and uh, it took me a long time to find it. But when I got over uh, into the uh, area where I was hearing it come from, it w wasn't real close. So I got a got a couple pictures of that hooded warbler, and this kingfisher uh, was working Kendall Lake. And uh, one time it got close to me and flew away when it saw me, and it was, I was hoping to somehow get a get a picture of this 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 gal. And uh, while I was fortunate, I was getting ready to leave, and I was behind a bush when when it decided to fly in my direction. It didn't see me because I was behind the bush, but uh, it perched right there. And when it did, I you could see me from that position when it, after it landed, and, but I was able to get a couple couple shots off. Um, of that one, so I was happy. You can never go wrong with kingfishers. That was good. So, um, okay, what do you got next? That might be about it. Is anything? Ah, the field sparrows. Yeah, the um, in the um, in the Kendall Hills area where the where it's kind of believed that, um, but actually there were there were quite a number of these prairie warblers seen. Um, there was there were five or six male, singing males. Um, by um, Dwight and Ann Ch Chasser uh, had mentioned that they had those, and but th their song actually is similar to a field sparrow, sort of. If you don't know the, how to tell the difference, and it was nice to be able to actually listen to both of them and compare the two. And the field sparrows tend to accelerate, uh, ascend in steps, whereas the prairie warblers are uh, more wimpy sounding and more. more um, seem to accelerate more evenly as they go up. But um, and um, but these field sparrows, it was funny that they came right next to me by the by the uh, trail when I was there. There were two of them, um, and um, I, I always had a hard time getting pictures of field sparrows. But he's he, I think this is just one of them. It both has a caterpillar in his beak there, but there was a second one. And uh, since it, to me that was a Quite a treat as well. Um, next slide. I had a couple um, damselflies in this case. I had some dragonflies too. Um, this one on the left of your world damsel fans, so I that's a brand new one for me. I didn't when I saw that I I, I didn't recognize it and I, I thought it was something different that I had never seen before. I was able to identify it as an aurora damsel. Um, and then um, the violet or it's variable dancer. Uh, that I've seen before. When when it's actually viable, you can't miss it. It's a gorgeous little damsel fly. Um, but it, it isn't always that violet. And um, so they actually call it a variable dancer now. Uh, but there's, I guess, a subspecies that they call it the violet dancer. Um, next slide. 
Up Sin and Fern always gets my attention. That was uh, by Kendall Lake, and and uh, the uh, X skippers are probably one of the most common uh, skipper butterflies in the area. So that one stayed on the clover uh, for me for a little bit. I was able to get snap a picture of that. Next slide. Yep. In a twelve spotted skipper, I don't I see I see those every so often, but they don't always pose nicely for me like this one did by Kendall Lake. Um, so I was happy with that, but the, this uh, butterfly, the little wood satyr, uh, that that was a lifer for me actually for um, for a butterfly. So I was happy to catch that by Kendall Hill. Uh, next slide. And there's my little little fledgling there. Okay, Michelle, it's yours. All right, thank you, Tom. That was wonderful. I love that picture, um, the the one of the female wood duck up on that log with that incredible light. That's amazing. And of course, they get such a close shot of a belted kingfisher. I was very jealous of that one. Maybe someday I'll get one like that. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you to Marianne and John Henderson, Al Ram, Lisa Gerbig, Nancy Howell, Sean Missig, and Tom Fishburn for participating and submitting all these wonderful items to share with everyone. And a huge thank you to the U.S. National Park Service for Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Uh, I've listed the suggested sites there, the Beaver Marsh, uh, Station Road Railroad, Station Road Towpath Trail, and Virginia Kendall Lake um, addresses there. Uh, please visit wcaudubon.org for more virtual field trip opportunities. And of course, just love that photo of the red-winged blackbird fledgling at Beaver Marsh by Tom Fishburn. So uh, with that, I would like to open it up for discussion. I have 7.59. We have a minute, or we can go a little over. I, I certainly have time. So uh, please let's go ahead, and if anyone has anything to say, um, take yourself off mute and speak. It was nice to see Lisa. It was nice to see Lisa uh, involved and with her photographs too. I just I just drool over everyone's beautiful photographs. Um, my my keyboard is really wet now because I've been doing <laughs> a lot. Um, but yeah, just um, you know the butterflies, the damselflies, the dragonflies, and uh, again just the flowers, the birds. Just just uh, oh, and the, even the even the stormy weather. Uh, I like those weathers, the sky scenes and stuff like that. I appreciate it, everybody. Thank you, Nancy. I also wanted to say that I really enjoy the fact that, you know, we, we all go to these places, but everybody comes back with something different. Even if we're seeing the same place five minutes apart, we all come back with something different. And that, for me, is what makes this absolutely amazing, just the variety of species and everything involved is it's wonderful. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, that that is um, really interesting that you know we all bring something different back to share, for sure. So so true, Sean. And uh, sure looked like you had a good time. Uh, but got some nice pictures there, and um, have. Pictures of the Eastern Kingbirds, too, that you guys got were really good. I, Michelle, I think, got some really good ones. Thank you. Very nice. And Nancy. I'm jealous of, yeah. of the kingfisher. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Blood wing hawk. Anyway, I, yep. you you think they're still nesting, like, by the ledges? Is that where they're, why they're around? Um, I don't know by the ledges. We generally get them at Indigo. You know, either flying over or calling from the wooded area there, but not as often this year as we've had in the past. So, yeah, I remember years ago. Anyway, there they were supposed to be nesting. Um, maybe maybe it was more towards um, the, the quarry area along uh, the main road there too. North, north of Indigo. That might be where, where I'm thinking of. Hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I haven't heard a whole lot about blood wounds, uh, so I'm glad to, to hear about this, because that's a good bird for that area. You know, we, don't, we don't see blood wound hawks a lot. No, I didn't even see any this spring on migration uh, at our bird walk. So, again, it, spring was weird. Um, this summer was better. Oh, and finally, 
ran into or somebody showed us the um, ruby-throated hummingbird nest that was um, north of the boardwalk at the beaver marsh. You have to go quite a bit north and there's a, a beaver dam that, that the beavers have created um, and it's in that area and it's just like right there. If somebody didn't point it out and there's two little babies in the nest, at least they were Monday, they're ready to fledge real soon. So, But how many bazillion people have gone by, including ourselves, and we have not, we have not noticed that nest either being built or the female incubating because it just it's beautifully camouflaged. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the area up north of the boardwalk, uh, you you mentioned the green heron, um, and um, is, is the green heron typically hang out in the corner there where the, the turn goes towards Indigo Lake, where the um, um, the mobile house development is. Um, we see them there quite often. Yeah, I, I saw saw it there in May, um, and the, I didn't know if it, if it was a regular there. I didn't go up that far this time. I, mean, okay. I get tired or I get tired quicker anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I made it up to the the bend of the river there, where I saw okay. I only grew through her in June. But um, in May there was uh, an American bittern hanging out. You probably saw that then too. Back yeah, in May, yeah, you know, right. Huh. All the time you were there. That was amazing. Yeah, cause I understand that was there for maybe a good week. Yeah, you know, easily. Mm -hmm. The Cuyahoga Valley offers a lot. Yeah, it certainly does. All right, any other um, comments, thoughts, questions from anyone before we end the call? All right. Well, thank you all for joining me this evening, and I hope to see you next month for the next virtual field trip. Show, let me show off my T-shirt. My, my oh, piping pro oh, 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 <laughs> that's great. No, no, Right, oh, Ohio's first nesting piping clovers in 80 years. Oh, that's fantastic. Did you get that as a as a volunteer, or did, is it purchasable? Uh, yes, it's a it's a volu volunteer. I don't know if I can do this, do this or not. Oop. Okay. I can do oh, that. yeah. Oh, Mommy Bay, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> piping clovers. I just crashed some stuff. That's all right. <laughs> Paperwork. Nice. I hope to go back tomorrow if I don't run out of steam. All right, fantastic. Thanks, thanks Michelle. All right, thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, everybody. And thank you. Don't forget to take off, uh, take it off, record when you're ready. All right, I will. I will. My, okay. my mouse is over that button. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.